Hello everyone, I'm Lumpology, and frankly, I'm a little obsessed with board games. I have also recently become quite obsessed with 3D printers. So, let's take the best of both worlds and make board game pieces in 3D printers. For starters, we're going to need a program for modeling. It doesn't really matter which program you use, but it has to be 3D CAD compatible. I will use a program called Blender, because it is a program I have experience with. First, let's get some basics. Small, flimsy parts? Bad. Large, simple geometries? Good. See this kind of stick thing? Get rid of it. You can print the stick separately, but it might break when post-processing. Remember, the more material, the more sturdy. Okay, let's get started. Blender has handy 3D printing tools which you can enable in add-ons. Using a square, I'm going to model a base. I'm going to bevel in the sides, but I'm going to try and keep the geometry as simple as possible. Using the E key, I will extrude the form upwards, causing some contours in and out. Perhaps I'll make a little platform up top. You can have overlays, but they must be kept to a minimum, as the more overlays you add, the more support material will be required to hold the overlay up. I'm just going to continue modeling for a bit, and when I have a design I like, you can see a few more extrusions here and there, I'm going to check this utility panel to see if my model is compatible with 3D printing. I need to make sure there are no open parts or breaks in the model. Look for single vertexes like this, or incomplete triangular geometries. Infinitely flat surfaces in one or more directions will not print. Make sure every part of the model that you want to print has volume. You can see in this example I have a bunch of different parts spaced on the build plate. You can build multiple models at the same time. Try to keep them densely packed to minimize printing time. Remember that 3D printers can only print rigid surfaces, so don't expect any squashing. Similarly, 3D printers are only the color of the material that you print. In this case, we'll be using PLA. I will be using the program Kura for slicing my model to make it compatible with the 3D printer. Many different printers have their own slicing software, but the gist is they let you control the print controls. Kura has its default recommendations, but I like to set the resolution a little more fine and keep the infill density at 20%. Leaving the shell's thickness at default is fine. If you have overlays that are not supported by anything, make sure to check supports. I also recommend having an adhesion layer to increase the likelihood of your model's successful printing. When you're done, just hit Slice, and then save the model to a USB stick. Printing the model should be as simple as plugging the USB stick into the printer and selecting the file that you saved. Here's a different batch of models that I printed earlier. After printing, you're going to have to remove all of the support material and adhesion layers, and you may need to use some rudimentary tools to peel off and sand down the surfaces to make them more safe. 3D printers can produce a lot of excess waste, so this is why we try to keep our support materials to a minimum. We can use things like fabric paints to print half of them a different color, and then, voila, we have a chest set. 3D printing designs can take multiple attempts, so it's important to not give up if your first attempt fails. This model, for example, took three attempts to print, and even on the third attempt, came out kind of rough. It's important to remember to keep learning and iterating. There are so many cool things you can do, even more complicated than what we did in this video. Well, that's all from me. Happy 3D printing!